Glock in the house, SHOT Show 2011. This is nothing fancy. Hey dudes, what's going on? Thanks for watching. I caught some flack in 2010 for not doing a Glock booth review. They're like, dude, you are a huge Glock fan. How did you not do a booth review with Glock? I don't know. I don't really plan this stuff. It just kind of comes, man. We'll go look at these guns here in just a second. We've got all kinds of Glock reps. Good folks in the Glock booth right now. They may or may not want to be on camera, so I'm not showing their faces. We're going to go in and talk to one of the, I think, regional managers or somebody here at Glock. This is Mike McAvoy. Did I yep, say it right? that's right. Mike McAvoy. How are you doing, sir? Fine. Thank you so much for hosting the Net and Fancy Project. This will be the face of Glock for TMP in 2011. And guess who's here as well? Yeah, we're cross-examining today. So. <laughs> Sadly missing crew member helping me out here at SHOT 2011. All right, we kind of planned what we're gonna talk about here in the Glock booth review. It's on everybody's mind. Mike, we talked about off camera. Gen 4 Glock 17, what's up? All right, here you go. First off, this is the 25th year commemorative model for the uh, Model 17 Glock. And it's uh, the. Uh, That's cool. Model. It's got a plate in the grip there. It's got the. Uh, you got a plate in your head, don't you? Yeah, right over here. It doesn't say 25, though. That's cool. Go ahead, Mike. We're listening, brother. And this is the. Uh, the uh, we're making a 2500 uh, run gun on this. Uh, guns for this. So just 2,500 of them? For now. And then uh, we're going to, and uh, I don't know what the price is going to be, but it's gonna, we're going to put that out. And, uh, Wow, those That's are going to fly. You d you guys don't do the OD frame anymore, though, do you? No, we, did, we stopped doing the OD frame because we couldn't sell them. But now, what are you saying? Everybody wants them now that you've been making them? First, you can't get one, then everybody wants one. <laughs> the one I show show a lot in the Ned Fancy Project yeah, is. We both the, have an OD frame. Yeah, we, we like do. It. We got OD frame 17s we love, and then. We Duracoat them, too. Yeah, we do Duracoat them. Sorry. Uh, and specifically, Mike, and you know this is coming, a lot of questions, 9mm Glock 17 Gen 4, how's the reliability, the official Glock line? Because okay. there's a lot of disinformation out there. Roger that. First off, this is the, uh, the uh, maybe good information, I don't know, I'm trying to get to the bottom this of This right here, uh, on, the, on the double recoil spring, yeah. when they first came out with this, was, this is a 17, but they first came out with this, this was made for, uh, uh, for the Model 22. Right, and, right. Uh, with the, this was like made for a real hot ammo, you know, duty to ammo. Re duty ammo for to take the reduction, reduce the recoil. Down. And better suited for like a snappier caliber, like a forty. Right, Roger that. And 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 uh, this uh, took it away. Then what the problems that they had was when they switched from forty to nine. The, with the nine millimeter, it was still that same stiff recoil spring. And then the problems that they were having was when the uh, shooting, like practice ammo, for ex un inexperienced shooters when they took, uh, yeah, sir, right there. for in like inexperienced shooters, what they were having is uh, uh, the uh, not enough. In it. Well, it wasn't as, it wasn't enough to force the recoil back. So if if you didn't have a good grip, a good block grip. Uh, or a good grip on a weapon holding it properly, where if you had a, like a gap in between where that muzzle flip, or uh, you know you wouldn't hold it good uh, with limp wristing or shooter and things malfunction politically correct. Way. Anyways, yeah. the, yeah, is limp wristing in? Not politically correct. Yeah. I didn't know that. You can't say that anymore. Dude, Don't say limp wristing at all. Of course, yeah. we're not into PC <laughs> here at TMP. Yeah. Well, anyways, that that right there, uh, you know. Uh, it produces a shooter, you know, it won't go back okay. to the battery as fast as you got. To so what you're saying, Mike, though, is you're saying related to ammunition of choice and shooter technique, yeah. Gen 4, 17 with a double captive recoil spring has yeah. caused issues? Yeah, it has is, caused issues. Okay, it, with those caveats in place. Right. I'm using standard pressure ammunition. I'm a good shooter. Gen 4, I give this the abuse that Glock has always been famous for excelling through. I'm talking mud, ice, different weather conditions. 100% reliable? Roger that. And not only that, what they did was for to answer that market or the, uh, that, you know, not as powerful, you know, they made a not as powerful recoil spring, you know, a lighter, a lighter. So they lighten the springs up yeah. for the 9mm version. Yeah. Right to that. 
what a lot of reasons why well a lot of people went to the Gen 4 right. is because of the back strap sizes. Sure. And what's uh, the best thing that I like about it is the, the magazine release. If you notice on the yeah, magazine release, it's a right. bigger plat platform and it's reversible. Uh, and I was always I was always jealous of left-handed shooters because they could use their index finger or their social finger to drop the mag. But hell, now social now finger. I can just you know just drop your thumb down and, and you know what I'm saying? Just try it like yeah, you know how you, like a lot of remember the old way like that. And now all you gotta try it like that. All you gotta do is drop your thumb. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah. That's way different. That's it. So, anyways, so and it's reversible for the uh, left-handed shooters on that. On this right All right. So and, there you have it. And, uh, and then the back straps. Now, okay, go ahead. Now the back straps. We, we don't have like uh, that's the that to me that's the number one. Here, I'm gonna. Are you getting good? Luck? No, you're getting good. Let me come over here. That way yeah. we're out of shadow. Okay, right shadows right. are evil here at on Shot the, Show. On the back, on the back straps is the uh, uh, the smallest size, like. Uh, is there's no back straps on it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so not, it's not. And then if you want to, this is like for people with smaller hands. Yeah. For the, uh, sadly, you're kind of like that. Put your I hand am. against mine. Yeah. Put yeah, that, your other one, bro. You see the difference? And then, so for me, I have to have the flat back. Yeah, yeah. And then I, this one right here is it. Then you got the medium size if you want to make it feel like the old Gen 3. Okay. And then right here is the. Uh, Big hand size. Let me get my technical lighting in place. Oh, see the ribs in there? See what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I totally see what you're saying. No, and then here's the. Uh, okay, here's the question, that. dude. And then, oh yeah, one more thing. Go ahead. Let me throw that in. Here. Throw now, it. Throw it. Now here's the deal too, where people are shooting like guys with real big hands, a lot of meat on them. They were having problems. I don't, I don't have that, but but you know where their hands are so big, where they get slide bite. Right. You know what I'm saying? No, and uh, so they come out with a beaver tail. Oh, check that out. I haven't seen that before. Try that. That's, That's amazing. only available on Gen. Okay, look at the lighting. Look at the high tech lighting. I have not had slide bite on a 17 or any other Glock, no, but I understand the some, there is some with, big guys. Yeah, some guys have some real meaty hands. Yeah. I can see the issue. That is, a, and it's a simple mod. It just snaps on, right? Yeah. Well, Beautiful. it snaps on. Now, it, there's a pin here that comes with a. I, I should have put. Yeah, it's in. a retention. Pin. Right. It's it's just like the yellow one. But the thing is, is uh, when it's on there, well, you can shoot with this thing on it all day long. But the thing is, if you're going to issue this out to one of your uh, Whoever your officers or one of your Marines or troops, or whatever. Uh, when, and once you find that size, just put the damn pin inside. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And then, and then that, that's how that works. Now, a lot of people think that when Generation Four came out, you quit making Gen Threes. Is that true? Oh, it, you know what? Uh, we're still going to continue making Gen Three models. Did you guys get that? Say that again, Mike. You're still going to do what? We're going to. I'm sorry. We. We're still going to continue making a Generation 3 models. You know, the older ones. Yeah, there, I, that was news to me. I, yeah, I didn't not, know that either. I thought Gen 4 replaced Gen 3. That's and right. Never make so if you game. like a Gen 3 17, it's still yeah. avail available. No, oh, yeah, another thing you need to know too is uh, um, we used to make the uh, RTF model. You know what the. Yeah, yeah. we don't make that no frame. more. Um, the the uh, it's the uh, raised texture finish. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a, a lot oh, it's more on aggressive. This one, right? It's a lot more aggressive than this. Yeah, one. it was pretty aggressive. And, yeah, uh, you got a lot of flack for that, didn't you? Well, a lot of people. I, I'm personally, I like it. I love so it. So this is a little but bit the thing moderate. Is, but the, it's a little a little bit more moderate. And the thing is, is uh, uh, it was tearing up people's shirts. Uh, like duty mean, stuff and you know, a lot, lot, and no, I, just their shirts. shirts. And it, a lot of them shirts are ex a lot really expensive. I like this. I think this is a happy medium. The right yeah. stuff. And, and I'll tell you, on my Gen 3 Glocks, I put the decal grip on it. Yeah. Sadly, you've seen that model. I have seen them, yeah. But I don't think you need anything on the Gen 4 frame. Right now? Uh, well, Bill. Okay, I'll be, uh, how much longer you know, Two more minutes. Let's go to, minutes? We can go to showroom floor anyhow. We're getting clown booted out of the Glock room. Standard. No, a GMP, man without a country. <laughs> Dude, we had like some TV Mike channels here in the booth that were before us. I guess in order to do a booth review at Glock, you got to hey. get the VP's approval, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's like yeah. you just don't show up with a camera and start well, filming at Glock. Low. These guys are smart. That's how you do it. That way you can kind of control Anyways, your product. You want to go over to putting it together? Yeah, dude. Okay. Yeah. All right. Put it together on a, on a, on the tolerances. Just make sure it's in the, in the C clamp. And then. Uh, oh yeah, this is really important. What you told yeah. me off camera. Yeah. He says really seat. Just well, all you got to do is just make sure it's in there. Yeah, it's like any other handgun yeah. with a captive yeah. recoil spring. It's not, it's not flopping around loose. Too. Yeah. And then just with the uh, trigger bar assembly with your thumb, just tap it, reset it. Right. it. 
just hit it reset, like, and then set it right on on the rail. Yeah. Make sure it's on the rail. And then rack it. Reset the trigger bar before you put yeah. it back on too. Yeah. All right, I didn't know that. Well, I need to go no, back. That's news to me too. <laughs> no, no, I think we're good. No, but I want to make sure my viewers understand that yeah. because is that in the instruction manual, manual of the Gen 4? No, what I you just said. Ha! See ya. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So thanks for explaining. Perfect. That's what I'm saying. So that's okay, information no. you're only going to get here. I think I'm going to take one of these. What do you think? You got to take this. Word. It's better Ooh. than one you got. Word. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, is he slamming my red neck lanyard? Thank you. And no well, problem. Yeah. I wouldn't expect anything else from a Marine. I, okay. Right. Out to the booth. Out to the booth. Hey, let's show them what your favorite uh, block is, dude. By the way, Mike is a diehard, or at least was a diehard 1911 dude. Am I right? Roger that. We're weaving our way through the Glock booth. All right. Well, I got to tell him the story, Mike. This is a funny story. Okay. Okay. So you got. What did you do in the Marines? I was uh, in. Uh, I was a sergeant major when I retired. Sergeant major. Yeah. Man, how many years? Thirty. Thirty years, yep. U.S. Marines. I need to check you out on that prion. All right. So you do you hard click. And then soft tap it to get your bright, brightness yeah, yeah. levels. All right. Only okay. the best lighting products. I don't have the magazine. Whatever. But uh, I, um, I'll be straight up. Yeah, I was always anti. When I was in the Marine Corps, I was always anti Glock. And uh, you hated them. <laughs> well, no, I just said a Tupperware gun. What the hell? You know, 1911 gun. I was like, I, I like 45 ACP. They've been killing people for 100 years and all that. But anyways, um, my Marines got together and uh, <laughs> they bought me a Model 36. But it was an OD green. They don't make OD green no more again. I think I mentioned. That and I liked it, so I, they bought me that gun and I liked it and I and I carried it ever since. And to me, to me, uh, um, this is uh, easily transitional from a 1911 to uh, uh, a Glock because of the the way that it's skinny and uh, it just feels good. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't have the I don't have the magazine in it right now. They don't they didn't have it for the show. A 36 but, to me, Mike, feels just about like a 19. Great right. midsize. It is feel it's to the it. smallest one. It's a it's 1911. Some folks don't like it. I, I like it. But they, they, I don't know. They think there, there's a perception out there that the recoil on a 45 is so much bigger, but they haven't shot it. You know. Well, it's just you a, also don't have their forearms. It's a little bit different. No, I mean, than some average. I went marine to, arms on this yeah. dude. No, I'll, I'll tell you what. I went to an agency um, where they had females there, and they were shooting 1911s, and they said they were their worst shooters. And I put a 36 in their hand, and they were shooting clover leaves at 20. It was a uh, 20 yards, wow, but wow. still they what? were shooting. Yeah, I ain't kidding you. I saw, Dude, female officers shooting clover leaves at 20 yards standing. Yep, amazing. Wow. But amazing. but uh, the gun I know for sure can do it. It's uh, that's cool. <clears throat> and then we you know we got our competitive shooters that shoot the 34, 35, and they're doing really good. That's true. That. So they gave you the Glock 36 as a gift, parting gift when you retired. Yeah, they did. And you saw and then, the well, yeah. light. Well, and then, and then I started shooting it, and then uh, then after that I got a job. My old CEO is vice president. And then by I got the way, a, I'll roll. Oh, there he is, right over there. Here comes a picture. See this dude right here? He absolutely did not want to help us do the do, the review. But he gave us Mike. <laughs> he gave us our blessing. Welcome TMP into the house of Glock. And this was, uh, he got him hired here. How cool is that? That is cool. You guys are still friends? Yeah. Do you just call him sir? No. Just Josh, yeah, right? Josh. Just going way up. Nice. Uh, 25th anniversary, yo. Right to that. That's this good right What are you guys here. doing? I saw these. These are kind of trick. Got a little pin here. That's cool. Did you get one of these yet? No. I'm gonna score one of these. You got some keychains too. I saw the keychains. I scored one of those. I'll borrow a pin from me. That's cool. Excuse me. Hey, you can give one to give Yeah, it's like the beaver tail that you can slap on the, the backdrop. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So if you're getting like hammer bite with it. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. I don't know. Uh, hey, give this to your girlfriend for hearing this, man. One on each ear. Oh, gosh, you know it. I'm good. <laughs> Everybody that's watching this video, two mics, and it's like, oh, I want one of those. Yeah, sorry. You're sorry. Not here. Sorry. I feel guilty if I take two. Yeah, so take two. Yeah, one for your girlfriend. <laughs> she did. I love that. That's cool, that plaque. If that came in OD, I'd be more excited. Eventually, it'll get back there, won't we? Like, maybe. Oh, hey, you never know. What else you guys doing for 25? Just uh, this version right here? Yeah, that's it. Sick. 
Uh, how about your sales? Still going strong at Glock? Oh yeah, real good. What percentage is uh, civilian versus uh, Leo military? Um, two to one, the vice president said, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, two to one yeah off camera to one he civilian. threw that out, didn't he? So yeah. once again, we see that the civilian market is actually critical for R&D and sustainment of the arms industry, if you ask me. Well, I don't know about R&D, it's for the, uh, the military is the one that pushes that. Yeah, but I mean, I'm saying the, the money you get to, to do a Gen 4 Glock will be, you know, if you're sell, selling a lot to civilians, you're bringing a lot of money in oh, that yeah. you can spin off in whatever direction you want. Cool. Um, like the Gen 4. I love that mag release on the Gen 4. Guys are always asking me, nothing fancy review than the Gen 4. Okay, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> I love the mag release, just like Mike said. I think it's huge. Backstrap is cool. Right. I will tell you one thing though, what would interest me interested me more is if Glock gave a version that had a 1911 grip angle on it. I know they probably will never do that because it flies in the face of Gaston Glock's research and the I angle he came out with. I know, that's a stumper for the ages, I guess. But you know what? For me, once I got used to the grip angle, you can the, shoot. it goes right in the recoil. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can stay right on. Yeah. The I'm trigger reset, I mean, a lot of folks don't know, understand what trigger reset is. They slap the trigger, you know. And, uh, I'm with it. You know, and guys guys say that. they like, once you get used to Glock, you're in there. But going from a Glock to maybe a more standard hand grip angle, I don't know, whatever, 1911. It takes, it's just training, like we always say. Just like Train it, man. Yeah. And it's, and it's, you know, it's, all it is, is training and practice. Absolutely. Back to the review. Thought I forgot, didn't you? I didn't forget. All right, I love the texturing on yeah. this. I think the texturing, don't you think, sadly? A little calmer than the RTF. A little bit calmer than the RTF. It's ideal, I said that in the room. Uh, double captive recoil spring. Eh, to be honest, I'd rather stick with the Gen 3 version that is so, so highly proven. Hundreds and hundreds, of, let's just say millions of rounds and all the guns. Um, we did ask, by the way, Glock off camera, why did you stick with that double captive? And I think the answer was simplicity of manufacture and it's actually worth working just fine. Yeah. Okay, if you shoot ammo, that's that's what we're being told at Glock. Proper I technique. Proper technique. Uh, ammo. Okay, I haven't shot the Gen 4 yet, so I don't know. And honestly, even if I did, I couldn't duplicate the amount of rounds that Glock sends down range. I would give you a minor data point on the Gen 4, and that's what I'd give you. And that's what I'll probably eventually give you. But they're telling me here, and I have no reason to doubt them, they've sent hundreds of thousands of rounds down range out of your Gen 4 17s with thumbs oh, yeah. up results. Sadly, anything yeah. to add? Anything I'm missing? No, anything I'm lying so about? No. no. All right. I think it's great. Uh, I'd actually like to score one of these. I, I mean, I'm just kidding. I got so many Glocks, it's not even funny. But that size plate is pretty awesome. Limited edition, then, right? Yeah. Okay. 2,500 made, you said. In 17 model only? Yep. The quintessential Glock, the 17. Right. So you're a 45 dude, though. 36 and a 21 are your guns. Guns of choice. All right. That's me. There you go. All kinds of Glocks. I mean, if we show you one, we show them all, right? Yeah, yeah. They all look the same, just different calibers. One I'd really like to add to my inventory as a bear gun is a Glock 10 millimeter. Oh, yeah. I've heard good. A lot of guys up in Alaska love that gun. Here we go. Now that I've mentioned that, here comes a bear gun discussion in the, in the video. 10 millimeters not enough for a bear nut. Is you insane? Well, I'll tell you what. I'd rather have a Glock 10 millimeter on me that holds, what, 15 rounds? For the full size, as nice opposed to nothing. If I'm backpacked into the backcountry, ideally, if you're taking a pump shotgun with slugs in it. Sorry, I almost fell over right there. It's happened before, dude. What else, Mike? I think that wraps it up. Sergeant Major USMC. That's Mike, the face of Glock, Shot Show 2011. I think we covered some high points. I'm we're sure good. we're forgetting something in the booth review, though. Yeah, I'm done lighting it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm through lighting. And you've gotten checked out on that I'm light much at this better point. Now. All right, we're going to ask Glock to throw in for some giveaway stuff for TMPers, yo. you got to ask your buddy Josh, your CEO, right? Not guns. I mean, that's too complicated. Unless you guys want to do guns through FFL, talk to him. I ain't going to commit you on camera. We'll see what we can do, though. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good job. Yep. Thanks for your time. That's right. Glock 2011 hey, Shop Show. Nothing yeah. fancy. You know, we'll see you. Other booth reviews. Out.